Yo, what up, what up, everyone? Tay here, and a bit of a shorter video today, but I really wanted to talk about some of these new Thor 5 reports because I'm quite interested in the prospect of Thor 5, and recently we've been hearing these reports coming out from various outlets that Marvel Studios are in the process of developing Thor 5. And these reports are saying that Marvel Studios apparently want Thor 5 to be a more serious Thor film, and that because of that they are looking at more serious directors like perhaps Gareth Edwards. And Gareth Edwards directed Rogue One as well as more recently he did The Creator. And The Creator was really good but kind of boring but still good. But after seeing The Creator I was like, yeah, if that guy did Thor 5 with the right script I think it could be really good. And this news of Marvel Studios moving forward with Thor 5 is not at all surprising in my opinion because even though Thor Love and Thunder was widely panned by the fan base, with the Loki finale just coming out and being widely praised by critics and fans alike, it's not all that surprising that Marvel Studios would then greenlight Thor 5 and move into a more serious direction because I think Marvel Studios probably wants to build on that hype and vibe of Loki Season 2 and that the next logical place to do that would be in a fifth Thor movie. So yeah, we're going to talk a bit about what Marvel Studios have already confirmed about Thor and Loki's return later on down the line, and also how Thor 5 could build off of Thor 4, and also how Thor 5 could tie into the bigger narrative of the multiverse saga. But first, before we get to everything, make sure and check out the most recent video I put out a few days ago on Kang and Doctor Doom if you missed that one. It covers all the different possible ways that Marvel Studios could move forward with both Kang and Doctor Doom or just one or the other or, you know, all the different possibilities that they have when it comes to those characters. So yeah, check it out if you missed it. It is a good one. And as always, make sure you watch until the end of the video because we do have super thanks comments and questions to respond to. And on that note, of course, don't forget that if you would like to leave a super thanks with a question or a comment on this video, then I will read and respond to those in the next video. And yeah, besides that, let's get into it. I would say season one and season two were developed and created as like kind of two chapters of the same book. And season two was about closing that book, uh, but that there are many other books on the shelf for this character and for this world. Okay, so like I said in the intro, with these new reports coming out regarding Thor 5, the most likely scenario is that Marvel Studios will look to use Thor 5 to reunite Thor and Loki and try to build off the finale of Loki Season 2. But something I haven't really seen being discussed very much is that Marvel Studios have already basically confirmed that this is their plan. Because a few weeks ago when Marvel was heavily promoting Loki Season 2, Loki executive producer Kevin Wright was making the rounds and giving tons of interviews. And not once, but several times, Kevin Wright said in these interviews that Marvel Studios' ultimate goal with Loki is to have him reunite with Thor, and that the ultimate goal is for the sun to shine on both of them again, quoting Loki's famous line from Avengers Infinity War. I assure you, brother, the sun will shine on us again. Now, before we go on, I should note that just because Kevin Wright has basically confirmed that we will eventually see Thor and Loki reunite, it doesn't necessarily mean that that will for sure happen in Thor 5. Because after the ending of Loki Season 2, it's pretty clear that Loki will most likely be a central figure in the upcoming Avengers movies. So it's always possible that Marvel Studios will save their reunion for one of those two Avengers films. However, I do think it makes a lot more sense for Marvel to have that reunion happen in Thor 5. That way the story can really focus on Loki and Thor's relationship and that character development as opposed to that being relegated as a side plot in the Avengers movies. And once Loki and Thor do reunite, it's hard to know for sure what exactly that will look like, you know, how that'll go down. 
But with how much Loki has evolved throughout Loki season one and Loki season two into a more kind of heroic, altruistic character, it would probably be likely that this reunion in Thor 5 or whatever project would probably be the first time that Loki and Thor were truly working together and not against each other in some way. And we've seen them care for each other and that explored a little bit in Thor Ragnarok and at the beginning of Avengers Infinity War. But like I said, that was very little. Um, this could be the first time that we could really see them come together and kind of form that bond without all the distrust. And in the finale of Loki season two, we saw how Loki fully embraced how powerful he truly is as a god when he became the god of stories and used his Asgardian powers to hold together all the branched timelines, forming the multiverse into this representation of Yggdrasil, the world's tree. And one thing I really dug about that Loki season two finale was how it really wrapped the whole concept of Asgardian mythology into the broader concept of the multiverse. And I can't help but wonder if this could mean that Asgardian mythology and Asgardian gods like Thor and Loki might end up being key characters in how some of these larger cosmic beings will also play into the bigger narrative of the multiverse saga. Because as we've seen in phase four, Marvel Studios have started to slowly introduce some of the biggest cosmic entities from the comics, like the Celestials and the Watcher. And in Thor Love and Thunder, we were introduced to a location at the center of the universe called the Gates of Eternity, which included these statues to all the major cosmic beings, including the Celestials, the Watcher, the Living Tribunal, Eon, Death, Infinity, and then of course, Eternity. But what I thought was interesting about this is that the only way for a character to travel to the Gates of Eternity was using Stormbreaker to access the Bifrost that basically this was somehow the key to entering and finding this sacred cosmic location connected to eternity. And, you know, it makes me wonder why that is, and if perhaps Asgardian magic and mythology will also end up playing into the bigger role of some of these other cosmic beings in the multiverse saga, and how they could potentially tie into this bigger story of everything that's going to culminate in Secret Wars. Because the cosmic entities did have a small but key role in Jonathan Hickman's Incursion Saga because we saw the Beyonders go to war with these cosmic beings and destroy all of them so that these cosmic beings wouldn't interfere with the Beyonders' bigger plans to destroy the multiverse. So with the incursions kind of coming into focus more as we go forward into movies like Deadpool 3 and then other projects in Phase 6, and with everything building towards the Avengers Secret Wars movie, it does make me wonder how the cosmic entities will potentially fit into all of that and if they will perhaps try to intervene somehow like they did in the comics. So yeah, if Marvel Studios does write the cosmic beings into this bigger story in some way, Maybe Thor, Loki, and Asgardian mythos will kind of tie into all of that, kind of building off of the whole Gates of Eternity scene in Thor Love and Thunder, and having Asgardian magic and perhaps other Asgardian relics, or, you know, something like that, tie into communicating with some of these characters, or locating them, or I don't know, but just connect to that in some way to just build off of what was already set up in Thor 4. Because we do know that Thor and the Asgardians were deeply connected to certain cosmic entities and gods in the comics, like Gaia and the different Elder Gods, and with how Thor Love and Thunder really did dig really deep into the mythology of cosmic entities in the MCU, and also setting up all the different cosmic gods of the MCU when we saw the Halls of Olympus, it really does feel like Marvel Studios may be trying to kind of tie in some of the cosmic entities and cosmic gods into that bigger lore of Asgard and Thor in the MCU. And, you know, look, I thought Thor Love and Thunder was hugely disappointing because I really loved Thor Ragnarok and I was really excited for Thor Love and Thunder 1. It was announced and it ended up probably being the most disappointing MCU project ever released in my opinion, because I was so excited for it. 
But that said, it did still introduce a lot of cool cosmic elements that Marvel Studios could build upon and tie into the plot of Thor 5 in some really cool ways, as long as they, you know, do it well and take the movie seriously and don't put in a million jokes and bits like they did with Thor Love and Thunder. And it sounds like that won't happen because Taika Waititi is not going to be involved this time. But after watching the ending of Loki Season 2 and then going back to Thor 4 and that whole Gates of Eternity scene and how the Bifrost was the key to the Gates of Eternity and to finding Eternity himself, I can't help but wonder if Asgardian mythology could play some bigger role in all of that going forward in the multiverse saga. And something else I've wondered about with Thor after watching the finale of Loki Season 2 is what untapped power we might see from him in the next project he appears in. Because in the Loki finale, we saw Loki kind of reveal and tap into his true power and show how powerful he really is. And if that's how powerful Loki really is, you got to think that Thor is on that same level in some different way and that we could see his untapped power in Thor 5 or one of these next Avengers movies. Because in the comics, Thor is immensely powerful, and we've never really seen Thor's true potential in the MCU the way we have in the comics. I mean, we got a glimpse of his true potential at the end of Thor Ragnarok, but for the most part, Thor has always relied on Mjolnir and Stormbreaker to access his power. So yeah, after seeing what happened to Loki and him embrace his full power at the end of Loki Season 2, it makes me wonder what the true power of Thor could be once he fully embraces his status as a god and as the Allfather, really. And I wouldn't be surprised if that is a big part of what Thor 5 is about. Because even after all of Thor's character development throughout Thor Ragnarok and Infinity War, by the end of Avengers Endgame, Thor is still turning away from his place as the Allfather and the Protector of Asgard because he has to first go out into the universe and kind of discover himself. So I wouldn't be surprised if a big part of Thor 5 is about Thor finally becoming and embracing his place as the Allfather and the true successor to Odin the same way that Loki finally embraced his role as the God of Stories. Because I think that the multiverse saga will probably be Chris Hemsworth's final hurrah as Thor. Because, you know, he's getting older, and with how hard it is for him to get that ripped every time he has to play Thor, it's really hard on him. So one of the reasons I think that Thor 5 will probably come out in Phase 6 before Avengers Secret Wars is because I think that Secret Wars will probably be Chris Hemsworth's final appearance as Thor in the MCU. So if Marvel Studios wants to fully evolve Thor's character into a more mature version of Thor, I think they are kind of running out of time and have to do that in his next few appearances. Now, as far as what other characters and villains could also appear in Thor 5, it's kind of hard to say with so little information. But one would think that Marvel would figure out a way for Hercules to be involved in the movie after his post-credits introduction in Thor Love and Thunder. And then we also have to remember that Thor Love and Thunder ended with Jane Foster being greeted to the gates of Valhalla by Heimdall. And the way that Marvel Studios have introduced Valhalla is as an astral dimension very similar to the comics. And by doing this, it kind of opens the door for Marvel Studios to potentially bring back dead Asgardian characters in some future project, like perhaps Odin, Heimdall, or of course, Jane Foster. Now, I'm not saying they will do this, just that it opens up the possibility to do that if they wanted to. And as far as who the possible villain of Thor 5 could be, again, it's really hard to say for sure without knowing really anything about the plot. But if they wanted to go really big and dig into the crazy Asgardian mythos like the Loki Season 2 finale did, I personally think it would be really cool if they introduced the Midgard Serpent in some way because there's just so much cool stuff they could do with that from the comics to create this big kind of mythical, magical spectacle. So yeah, that's just my two cents. And of course, we'll have to see what happens. But 
those are just some of my initial thoughts regarding Thor 5 that I wanted to touch on with all this news coming out recently about it looking like it's in development. So yeah, I hope you guys liked this shorter video. I'm sure we'll come back to this topic and talk about it more in the future because I still have a lot of Loki-related stuff I want to talk about after that Loki finale. So yeah, we'll talk about this more. And if you have any questions or anything about that, leave them in the comments, especially if you have like a super thanks you want to leave on it. We can talk about it more in the future, whatever. But on that note, speaking of super thanks, don't go anywhere just yet because we do have super thanks to get to. So let's jump into those. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so let's jump into these super thanks. And today there were actually three super thanks questions to get to. We had one from Meerkat Teeth, one from Steve James, and one from Aaron Liar Lier. But I think we are just going to answer one super thanks question today from Steve James because the other two from Meerkat Teeth and Aaron are both quite long questions, but they're also really good questions. So I hope you guys are cool with that, Aaron and Meerkat Teeth, that I save yours for the next video because I just want to, you know, kind of dig into them with a longer answer than I have time for in this video because they are good questions. So thank you very much for leaving them, and I'm going to answer those and kind of dig into them in more detail in the next video. So with that said, let's jump into Steve James 7930 and his super thanks. And this one says, Hey Tay, great video. I've heard a rumor that the films slash shows that release between Avengers Kang Dynasty and Secret Wars could all take place on Battle World and be a short phase together. If that's the case, what projects do you think would fit in? Personally, I could imagine a Spider-Man 5 where Peter gets the symbiote on Battle World like in the comics, or a Fantastic Four sequel with God King Doom as the main villain, or a Scarlet Witch movie with Ian McKellen's Magneto, or even Black Panther 3 where Wakanda is competing with various other factions on Battle World. All right. Thank you very much for this, Steve. And yeah, this is actually something I've talked about in a few videos a while back, the possibility that Marvel Studios could take some of those projects that come out between Avengers 5 and Avengers Secret Wars and make them take place on Battle World like it happened in the comics. Now, we don't have any concrete confirmation that this is what they are going to do but I really hope that they do do it in some way. I don't think they will make every project take place on Battle World because they could always have stuff that takes place at different points in time, the way that Captain Marvel took place in the 90s when it came out in between Avengers Infinity War and Endgame. But I do hope they do at least one or two projects that ties into Battle World or takes place on Battle World or somehow ties into the bigger you know, Secret Wars narrative in some way, because I love that about the comics, those battle world tie-in stories and how they really fleshed out the whole battle world universe and everything that happened there was so cool. And I don't think Spider-Man 5 or a Fantastic Four sequel would necessarily work because that would just be too soon for sequels to those projects. But I could see possibly a Scarlet Witch project maybe tying into something like that because there have been rumors and reports about Marvel Studios developing some kind of Scarlet Witch movie. And I could also see maybe Shang-Chi 2 tying into that because there's been reports that Shang-Chi 2 will be titled Shang-Chi and the Wreckage of Time. So that definitely sounds like a title that could somehow tie into that whole narrative. I also think it would be really cool if they did like What If Season 3 and made it all about Battle World and instead of the episodes taking place in a different reality, each episode just takes place within Battle World and kind of shows something that's happening in a different area of Battle World. But yeah, there's a bunch of projects they could do with that. It really just depends on how they introduce and do Battle World in the MCU. Because if they do Battle World like it was in the comics where it's another dimension, like potentially the Void, which is something I've talked about in past videos too, then it would be really easy to do these spin-off projects to show all these other crazy things that are happening in Battle World. But if Battle World ends up just being the 616 universe and it's the only universe left in existence, then it wouldn't be nearly as much like the Battle World of the comics and it would probably be a little bit harder to do that. But they could still do spin-off projects that take place, you know, that kind of tie into the bigger Secret Wars story. It just wouldn't be quite as fantasy-like as Battle World was in the comics. 
So yeah, thank you very much for that question, Steve. I, that's a fun one. And yeah, again, to Aaron and Meerkat Teeth, I will get to your super thanks in the next video. I really just wanted to be able to spend a little bit more time talking about what you guys brought up because they were good, fun questions. And then just one other thing real quick before we go, I just wanted to give a shout out to Debo1981 who left a very generous super thanks two videos back and I answered it in the last video. And when I listened back to the video, I was like, man, I kind of rushed through that question and that was like the most generous super thanks out of all of them. So I'm sorry about that, Debo. I hope I didn't rush through your question too much. I was trying to get the video finished and yeah, I, I hope you didn't feel slighted on that one. I just wanted to give you a shout out and tell you I really appreciate it. So yeah, I just wanted to throw that out there. Thanks, Dave. And yeah, I think that covers everything for today's video. Remember, if you would like to leave a super thanks with a question or a comment on this video, then I will answer those and respond to those in the next video. And then again, if you missed the last video I posted a few days ago all about Secret Wars and the whole multiverse saga and the possibility of Kang and Doctor Doom both being the villains of the next Avengers movies and the different possibilities of what Marvel Studios could do with all that stuff, you should definitely check it out. It's linked in the description down below. And also, if you're new here and a fan of Marvel and the MCU, you should definitely subscribe because that is most of what we talk about. Not always, but it's definitely the majority. And yeah, also don't forget to come follow the channel on Twitter so you can be notified when new videos come out and just come talk to me over there about whatever nerdy stuff is the topic of the day. So yeah, leave your comments and nerdy theories on what you think is going to happen with Thor 4 down in the comments below, and I will be back soon.